Welcome back to the famous Solent Club hey. Social Nights. <laughs> it's good to be back, isn't it? It's great to see so many old faces and new faces too. So it's good. I'm not going to bore you with anything very much at all, except to say we're honoured to have John Westall here, the renowned hike and fly exponent, who's going to tell us all about how he does it. <laughs> so, thanks very much. Big round of applause. Hey! Thank you very much, Brian, and thank you all for the turning out. Um, it's great fun to be back out again, um, talking to real people rather than a, a video. So, let's be here. Of course, I came here uh, many years ago now with Paul Redmond and Harvey Foster and and Paul Hester, when we were, when I just sat out um, listening to some very, very good pilots, such as the, the great ladies, um, Stevie Nash, who was uh, probably the best um, high fly pilot uh, we've ever had in this country. Um, and he inspired me to do high and fly. Um, so if I can inspire one of you guys, Keeping that going, are we? It'd be great to see more people hiking for you. Right, so Brian texted me and he said, uh, can, can you send me a photograph of um, what you're going to name, the, uh, what you're going to talk about? And without thinking about it, I said, You're the life of a hiking for pilot. And I sent it, I thought, Bloody hell. Lots of cover there, so I may have made a, a little error. However, what I've done throughout the year, I've, um, I've done some pretty good stuff, and uh, I picked out the 10 best things to talk about. And I thought I won't waffle too long without it. I'll, um, right, so I've used PowerPoint for that one. Wow. had to really teach myself how to use it. Just get this going.
So that was taken a year ago, rough written today, and um, it was a hundred k out of return, which finished off the year quite nicely that day. Um, and I made that bit of foot share for a friend, but I thought it was great to start off with the night with. So there we are, it's a title. So I got, when I started out, when I got reasonably good at the sport, um, in 2019, I had an aim to take part in a, in a competition at x and it was fantastic, great fun. Um, carried a bit too much weight, about 22 kilograms of weight, um, so it was a lick out, but full, full brief, and great fun. So next year I thought I'll do it again, but I'll be more competitive, um, so my aim was to take part in more races, which I did and there was a lot more competitive. Uh, a, lot, a lot of that was due to the equipment. I'd gone from 22 kilograms you know, to these things here, which would weigh you know, five kilograms. And obviously the, the proper hyper fly stuff, the zero lies, weighs it's a top full kit, about 10, 12 kilograms, depending on how much water you, you carry. Um, and this year, to do the same again, but to compete in Europe, and we went out there with a friend who took part in the Ivan Timmer, which was great fun. At the next level, a lot of fun. So that made me aim. So the plan then was to get fit, do lots of flying ground handling, and wrecking the UK and Europe sites. So from 2019 till now, I've been to the Alps three times, and I've been all, all over the UK flying. So tons of wreckies. Uh, some training then, this is a, um, so never stop training really, always doing something all year round, running, fouling, walking, weight training, stretching, cross ability, and lots of climbing and ground handling. I'm going to zip through this quickly because there's the too much detail on them, but this is sort of weights that I'm working at. Uh, my main wing, zero light, is three kilograms. Uh, and that's what you've got to be getting down to if you want to be competitive. Um, so if you look at the normal wings, four, five kilograms, you're half that weight. Um, same with the reserve, under a kilogram. Um, and just all, if it's ultra light, if you go for all lights, really light, these are all grams. So you've got your, yeah, as we harness, the harness is a kilogram and a half. You know, and you, you know, I've weighed all this stuff, it just helps you um, get a feel for what you've got. So if you're going for all beef, you've got your tent, 800 grams, you've got your map, and so on and so forth. You see how much weight, extra weight you're carrying. So you're looking at full vol beef, a comp, about 17 kilograms in weight, which is not bad. About 15 kilograms, it starts hurting a lot more, and you start doing this quite a lot. So 17 is all right considering I can carry all that there and it's about 17 kilograms. But obviously, if you want to start winning, or, um, and that's travelling, competition fees and shoes nearly a grand, and that, that's this year um, And of course, when you're flying in Switzerland, it's really expensive. So three, four grand for a uh, we called it, of course, and all heights of the number 500 quid. So it's um, quite an expensive ordeal. Um, this is another recce we did, I should play this.
which is great fun for that together, but that's another record. So um, you know it's like you we visual everything nowadays, don't we? And we've got that much footage, it's what you do with it all. But you know, it's just a bit of fun. Right, so this is the main event. So I'll pick these out from this year. Uh, it's like a diary of what some of the big things that, that, that has happened. And it was starting off um, from April right through to September here. Um, and, and what my, most of my year has been training or thinking about competitions um, or competition getting postponed. Um, you know, so, but, um, so these are the top 10 big ones I've done. So I started off with uh, XC, the Three Lakes Pinks, Bob Graham, North South Club, um, the Dragon, X Lakes, Iger, uh, Three Pinks, the Dales, XE Ring, which is uh, North, so the Dragon of South Wales, and the Eries North Wales, and the X Dales, which is uh, a brand new one. We started off in the year. Um, I always remember this one because it's April time and the year's just starting to bubble up and everyone's buzzing. We've got all the Pennine guys uh, from, from all these sites and all going to you know, Parley or Longridge. I think Longridge on this one. Uh, so we've got quite a lot of north in it. And the Dales are all buzzing and the Cumbrian guys are all buzzing and it's just the whole. The whole uh, network is alive with people yeah. getting out flying. Buzz and I, um, we decided that we wanted to break a record. Because I, you know, I've never broke a site record. So we thought we all got a thousand knots. Which is that one on the, off the motorway as you turn off on 236. So it's reasonably difficult to get going from there. So about 10 of us rocked up. And, um, and the vlogs got to about four and a half grand um, and me and Bud went over the back and almost straight away we're on the deck and I was like, no! We managed to get that second firm and wore down and then and flew over towards Parley uh, and then um, so I got a beautiful firm um, just northeast of Clivero like five, six metres per second and you are like you're dreaming, you're like this is awesome. And we zipped up and went over uh, Pendle and we're trying to fly to Sheffield. Now you guys they, so it's really hard, you've got a lot of airspace to get through. So you've got this tiny corridor, and um, I don't know how big it is, 10 Ks, 20 Ks, I don't know. But you've got the, the ground rising and you've got the airspace coming down and you've got to try and get through this little Square and then uh, on that particular day, there was a lot of cue names and a lot of rain, and and you know, and so it's really difficult to get anywhere to be honest. And we got to Pendle, and this big cue name was in front of us, and it, it was slowly moving over our little tiny corridor. Uh, and you know, I'd like to say, try and go for it or wait, or hang around. And it just shook, it's like a, a curtain of rain came right across our corridor and, and, and stopped our, you know, uh, our route through there. So we tried to fly around the kingdom and, and go into the airspace over at Leeds York, is it? Leeds York airspace, uh, which was shut down for COVID. But um, because we, we were, we were just uh, stuck on over, I don't know, we, we got jets anyway, I keep going. But we broke the record hmm. for Fowler. So we've got, I can't remember how far it was now, but Mike can't find the record. And, uh, so that was a great start to the year. And that was the, uh, and we got, when we flew over uh, Cliverall, we could see all the guys flying on um, Longridge. Because uh, we were going to head over there to come over and fly over here and, and carry on, but we decided not to in the end. So that was the first one, uh, a great start to the year. Uh, I flew this one on my own. Um, this is the, the, the three peaks in the lakes. This is the Skidor, Scarfell, and Hell Vellum. Uh, young Jacob was here with Richard Meek. 
hello students and I feel sad there and, and everyone had their own little plan and I, I thought well I want to do some hiking and flying so I'm not going to be a flight at home right? so if I land out somewhere I can get some training in the bus um, but ironically I managed to fly the right way around and land by the car so I got no, no physical training in but I've got a, I've got a nice flight in should be trying to go down to uh, it's not great but so that, was a, that was a week or two after that one um, you really think that was tough now yeah if you're ever going to fly the, the hardest part of the three peaks I think it's quite a big one um, and it's when you get over to Great Gable and then make a leap over to Scarfell you're doing this one in the anti-clockwise direction, which is the easiest way to do it. And um, that air around there is really tricky. So if you ever decide to, to do it, uh, it, it's about not hanging around to Great Gable because it, it'll just put you off. So the best thing to do is when you get over there, get over to Scarfell. And although when you go into that big bowl and you see all the walkers walking up, and they come quite flat. You're almost landing, but you just got to persevere and get onto the big cliff. And once you get to there, you can zip up and it's not bad from there at all. Uh, so like, yeah, so that's a top tip for you. Where did you launch from, John, on that, that day? That was on, on um, it was on Skidor. Uh, we took off from, oh, help me out, John. Jenkins Hill. Jenkins Hill, that's ah, it. Yeah. So yeah, Skidor. And then also we've done the Stidor, Staff on Pike, Hell Bell, and another top tip. If you want to shut down the triangle, always fly back over Filmia. So you've got Hell Bell, and you fly over the target, don't try and go down Hell Bell Bridge, it looks very tempting. But it's really hard to get back, shut, shut down the triangle. So always go back over Filmia, very lifted. Down that middle section, all the pressing, but back in the park to shut it down. Two top tips there. Bob Gray, this is a big one. So, um, Ed Cleesby's put together a challenge. Uh, the Three Peaks is one of them, the Bob Gray is the other one, the Dale's Three Peaks is the other. And we've got another one at Sempa, and how we also have Sempa one. Um, anyway, so this is the tough one. The Bob Graham, um, if you don't know the Bob Graham, it's a famous album. And you cover, um, I don't know, 70 odd miles. Oh, is it? Yeah, 63 miles. A lot of climbing, a lot of peaks. Uh, so what Ed's done is set out a, a challenge for hiking and flying. So you get 24, you get 48 hours rather than 24. Um, so Bud and I have been planning it for a couple of years, the best way to attack it. And it's such a complex thing to attack. And um, that's the route I do. You can just see here, you've got, let's just that, the right way around. So this is Keswick here, Jenkins Hill, that's take off, Skidor here. Just get your bearings, you've got the um, Scafell here and the Hell Bell Ridge here. Um, and you see, there's so many different parts to it to put together. You find the full compass, and you've got the sun rising and you know, warming the east side up and pulling around the south, southwest, and that changes the dynamic a bit. Then you've got the sea breeze here coming up these um, valleys which really affects it for you, you uh, coming back. So it's so complex. And, and as you were setting, I thought it wouldn't get, you know, get done. You just said it didn't be done, it'll ever get done. Because it's such a, um, a tough one. Um, on this particular day, uh, the 24th of April, the wind and the weather was perfect. It's like spring thermals, We've got a wind coming from here, coming sort of, no it wasn't, it was coming from here. So it's coming on the south easterly. 
and uh, so we're setting that up. Uh, so me, but Keith Patterson and Harvey Foster, we thought we'd give us a crack. Um, disaster right away in the morning. Um, the car broke down. Um, not just car broke down. Um, so I had to go pick him up. Um, Harvey Foster got there about two hours before us, and he made his way up to Tapeholm, which is here, to Jenkin Hill. Um, so by the time we got up there, Harvey was just launching off here, and he boomed up. Um, brilliant to watch. But normally, you would chat this on the sort of south, southwesterly, but we were watching from south, south easterly, um, so it was a bit more tricky. You can see there the way the thermals are, that's a thermal going back there. So you see the direction of the wind. So straight away, you were pushing into wind, going over a great calver here, and there, it was a plain Caffra here. Uh, so we zipped up with a majestic start, six grand, 6,000 feet, brilliant. Couldn't believe it, perfect start. Harvey, that's right here. Because you don't really have much to work on if you go down. And down in the bowl here, one of the, there's a lot of guys up from up down south, and one of them was Steve McIntosh, who's just done that traverse over um, the pole. So I noticed he was flying down there, so I had a quick chat with him, and, um, <coughs> and then we just cracked on over here, and it was just super, just super, it was just booming. It, it, it was amazing. And this photograph here was taken by Buzz. And this is over like Harrison Stiff from here, Landales. That's looking over towards Coniston, and we were flying that way. But we were just in a, a four or five metre per second thermal up here. And oh, it's just, you know, six and a half, seven grand. Um, probably more if we wanted it, but we didn't need it. it that, that lifting. <coughs> we just, that massive grims on that. You know, it was just. Just great fun, but look at that picture. It's amazing. So we were we were just laughing here. We, we flew over to Harrison Strip and tagged that. Flew over to here, thinking that this is gonna be really tricky. Uh, we got Scarefell Pike and we were mega high, great. And we thermal back to this turn point here, which is um, uh, Great Gable. And we're still turning as we're going back, it's fantastic. And we started chatting here because we always thought we'd do this section here on foot. Mm. And um, so we never really talked about finding. We thought we'll probably land somewhere around here, tab this bit, camp here, and then the next morning fly, you know, fly back, fly back in. And then so we just really didn't know what we were gonna do. So but we also knew that it's going to be a really tough area, uh, and it was. You have air coming up here, so the same breeze, sorry, coming up here, mixing. You had the same breeze coming up here, mixing. You had the prevailing wind coming over here, uh, spinning off thermals off Great Gable, etc. And Kirk fell. And he flew all over you know, on this leg here, and it wasn't pleasant at all. Now, those attacks are different to me. Bud put a speed bar on, which um, obviously it got to pillar quicker. Um, but it also warded up his wing, so it, it more strengthened his wing. Whereas I found a, a light thermal, and I thermal all the way back. It wasn't much, 0 0.3, 0.2, but because I was turning, I was warding the wing up, which made it feel more comfortable. It probably wasn't, but it just felt a bit more comfortable. With the wind, but it paid off, and there's a look, some of you, 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 you hear about a lot, but sometimes if you fly a bit slower, it's quicker. And this is this is the exact scenario where it works. So, Bud went for it, he got there, but he was lower, he actually he came back, and whereas I just slowly got higher, and when I got to pillar, I was starting out again. I was out with that really bad air, and Buzz, Buzz was uh, having to scratch around his balls in really rough air. So it paid off that. 
and allowed me to have a nice glide right across to Robinson's over here. It's a beautiful fire over here because there was clouds here and you like whisk the clouds so you could like duck into them and come out and you're just gliding away from all that bad air so it's really nice. And you see here, now we're, we're heading back north easterly. But you see where the thermals are now, you see where the thermals are going back here. So the thermals or the wind is going south and uh, easterly. You know, you can just get some gravity of the, the sort of complexity of it. Anyway, for me, it got really good. So I got here and then uh, I thermaled, this is a thermal here, and I thermaled up. Then me, me, the Herio said I can make gold. Like, what? I can fly in a gold. And the mate was just below me, in a bit lower. Um, and then I said, look, I'm going to have to go now. There's a lot of bad guys who want to talk. Well, we were talking about flying out of Dale Head and coming down here, you see, and come in. But once I got to that height, which I don't know it was, about six and six grand, uh, maybe a bit more, maybe six and a half grand, I just bounced off uh, not rig, really I just came in the goal. I can't believe it. But it's such a defining, difficult uh, challenge, you know, you really got to try it. If you, if you want to try a challenge like that, it's a thing to do. It's so, it's so good to do. And if you don't do it, and you, you go hike and involve with him, then you just camp out and finish it off the next day. But for Bob Graham, I uh, challenge anyone to do that. <laughs> Oh, great. I mean, you were out that day and you just have really been too, uh, I recall. No, not, we were stuck in catboats for ages. We needed the higher tank up, but I eventually got up and I was sort of sightseeing over the Great Gable. And I saw you and Keith go off towards Pillar and I thought, oh, they'll never get back from there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. yeah, I was thinking of the last one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, amazing. That yeah, was amazing. it was. It's, you know, that, that, you know, that'll keep, keep me going for about 10 years, that point. <laughs> it's, just, it's just great fun to do. But you can see, it's, a, it's, I think it's a huge challenge. You know, so you're not just going out flying, you're adding a lot more to it. You're thinking about the weather, you're thinking about the direction, you know, the, what sort of heights it, you've got, got to be flying at. It's like a huge jigsaw puzzle. And, but when it all starts coming together, we got to here and we, we started thinking, we might actually do this, you know. We, we didn't think for a minute we would when we were set up. I mean, we had our full ball bin kit. We were carrying an extra five kilograms in weight. And, uh, but it's just great fun get your teeth into it. And, and when, you, when, you, when you do it, uh, I think that's the third time I tried it. Uh, I tried to do it once uh, with a few of us. And, and so yeah, that's a picture, I love that picture. Just, just defines the whole day. It's a few fun. Um, so, <coughs> so the next big event, North South Club. Um, a few of the guys here, Jacob was on it. The great, great thing about North South Club, that's my third one now I've done. Uh, there was four or five days flying. But when you, you know, on the top of the pile here, you're looking down all these, uh, you know, the best pilots in the country. And if you can try and fly with better pilots than you, uh, you, you just learn so much. You know, so if you ever get the opportunity to do a North South Cup, uh, you do it because it brings on your level. Because you, you've got so much uh, skill and experience. Uh, and we had, we had some great flights, you know, some guys, some of the best flew to Sheffield, you know, from South Wales, you know, from um, Merford Timber, I think it was. And it's like, what? And then, uh, but most of us, you know, did some big flying there, and, and it's just great fun. It's great when you're looking down and you're topping the pilot. <laughs> A great shot. So that's in, North, that's in June now. Um, Hyper Flyer, the first, this is what I've been training for. A dragon, hike and fly. This is a, a little bit like the Ivan Tour format, 
you have to land at some turn point. And I'm happy here, but inside I'm actually crying my eyes out. I had to land when I'm just skying out uh, in a thermal, I'm about six, seven uh, meters per second up, and I had to land. And so it just had, you know, it was so destroyed. But anyway, that's, that's one of the turn points. Um, what I want to cover here, the turn points, so that's between that's blood myself and, um, I mean, uh, Becky, isn't it? Becky, 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 yeah, Becky has it. I mean, she's a young pilot and she's carrying her body weight. You know, I mean, it's just super strong. Right? So I had to put that one on, on, on Becky. And then that's Tim some of the guys, Barb's and myself at the finish. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of things here I thought I'd cover. So I took off, I started really well. Um, and I was reading it, and, and then I made a back call. And right now, some Ruby pilots uh, who are flying high can fly. There's a, uh, you know, my mate Bud, uh, Pete Patterson. You got, uh, you got a uh, Danny Swan Law, who was an amazing pilot. Oh, been flying about four years, but incredible pilot. Uh, uh, you got Danny Stars Moore. You got Greg Chilton. You got. Team because you've got Greg Hamilton and he, so you've got this new class of really good pilots. And if you make an error, you, you know, you can't recover from it normally uh, in, in that two day hike of flying. So um, I started really well, but I made a bad choice. It was too rigid and I went for the ridge closest to me, I don't know why, coming along the Black Mountains. and. Uh, I went for it, and then Bud went over it. He went for the ridge I should have gone for. And then uh, I thought, well, not a problem. I have a scratch here uh, and move up to this. It was just a mixing pot of, of air. He had air coming from the, from the west. He had air coming from the north and the south, uh, and a little bit coming from, you know, from such a huge mixing pot of air. And I thought it'd be a great idea to go try and get some height and it was awful, it just, I mean, you know, you, your wing was just going everywhere and you just almost stole in your wing to keep you um, flying. But I had enough um, hours, you know, and, and experience to keep it flying and I just knew I had to get a little bit of height so I had to turn back into it. Uh, but it's the only way I'm going to get, I thought, to get away from there safely. So I turned back into it and I got a couple hundred feet and I, just, I got out of there and Buzz, my mate, he was looking down at me and like, oh, I would like to be down there, you know. And I got out of it, so that was one mistake, but I got away with that one. The second mistake what I made, uh, it, it wasn't a safety one, but it was a, it was a tactical one. So I had this big ridge that went all the way down and we had to do this crossing with this valley. And I knew that I just go down here, I'll ping off the thermal and I'll try and cross the valley. And then plan B was I'll get high and I'll go round. And I've done that before, a year before, and I had a great flight the year before. So I got, got this thermal, went up, and then it, it peaked out to nothing. It's like, you bastard, you know. And then and I looked back and I was too far away to get back to the ridge. So I made a mistake. So I had to go with plan B being quite low down. And I managed to scratch around and get over to the tiny bottom and across the valley, but low down. And, and there was one particular time where I just caught a few treetops with the bottom of my harness. I thought, right, it's time to land now. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm pushing it too much. And so I landed and, and then, but that mistake, you know, it costs you, and you've got guys buying over and you're doing, wow. So, you know, just a little tactical mistake, and then and it puts you back. But I still finished in, in good time. I got about, I don't know, eighth, I think, or something like that. I think Tim got ninth, and, and Barb's uh, in the middle there, he got uh, tenth. So we did all right, but, you know, one small mistake costs you, and, and that's what I learned. 
you know, we've got a chain when you listen to like Kuma Myra and he's got all these things written on here, you know, relax and plan A, plan B, and, you know, and, you know, it's just frustrating because you think I could do so much better if I hadn't done that straight. And um, so the next high can fly get X mates. And um, I love that shot. I was taken. Uh, this is from uh, Mosdale Street, it's looking over at Scarfell, Scarfell Pike, and looking that way for a change. Quite a nice shot. Um, and that's the ZO light. Uh, it's a beautiful shot. Yeah, so the excellent. So we kicked that one off. Um, day one. And um, who was that? John. John. Um, that's John Oliver. That? Anyway, yeah, John was on that. He did really well. Um, was that your first hike and fly? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We're doing it again next year. Yeah, I mean, it's super tough. I mean, look at the weather, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, it's horrific weather. I think you've seen more cloud and wind and stuff. And, um, so, but day one is walking, getting wet, and getting tired. Uh, to give us some gravity, I, I think I attacked about 55 wave rights over the weekend. Um, so I'm just doing one or two for quite tiring. Um, but on day one I, I caught about 20, 25. So that's blood and myself growing up one of the hills. You can see how rotten it is. But some great guys, you know, you've got James Walker from, from Black Coo, this guy's from down south. Um, ben, Colin, lovely guy. And that's, you know, coming out of the cloud. It's great fun. Everyone's having a great time. Um, so, again, what I'll talk about here is, um, so day one was a walking day, a little bit of flying. I managed to fly from Carrick, Dark Scales, save, save me about 10 k's, but really tough flying. Very warm cloud, very windy. Um, uh, day two, and so day one, I've done a lot of hard work on foot, uh, and I was in a good position, you know, to do well. Um, so I set off, walked back up Glen Cathra, tagged through there, crossed the valley, what, what you saw before, over down the Hellbell Ridge. Got bugged down a little bit there, but flew all the way down that ridge, just tagging way right after way right, and point after point. Um, and I was trying to think about the crossing, the time. It had to be on the ground and finished by four o'clock. And uh, so you, you very much got a time constraint. So I think I came forth in this particular hike and fly. And, um, and the difference between forth and winning it was having a gamble. And I regret now not gambling. So I flew back from the best screens over Fairfield. I thought, right, I'm just going to fly around here for about five minutes, just thinking on the plan. You know, I'm quite tired. So I flew around and I thought if I land in Landale, I can run back from there um, over Rhinos or the Hard Lot, about 20 k's. I can do that in about two hours, I thought. Um, now, if I go over to Landale and go down the back of Landale, then I'm probably not going to make the finish line. So I chose to go from Fairfield to Heron Pike Cross Rydal and I wanted one more thermal over Lingmuir Fell um, and to get me over at Rydal's and back home but I never got it but I knew I could make it back just by, just by running and uh, I got loads of great photographs you know, just too many and so it's a big you know, it's a big running 20 k's over the two biggest passes in the lakes you know Rydal's and Hard Rock you know after you know, a couple of days hiking and flying. Yeah. And then I always remember one of the support team came up to me, uh, Buds, got in front of Ian. He went, Oh, well done, Westy. Not far now, mate. Keep it up. I went, Not far now. I got a run over Rhinos. I got a run over Hard Knot. And I'm knackered. And anyway, it made me laugh. Uh, but I got back. And I got back in fourth. But in hindsight, what I should have done was I had a gamble. Because if I flown, I wouldn't have flown over Landale, 
and I've gone down and walked back up in the Paris and Stickle. Took off from there, and once you're up across to Hell Mellon, it's a fly in. And I've just tagged like seven, eight Mandarin wearing rights. Probably Scarfell, Scarfell Pipe, Great M, Great Game, and Bow Fell. Boom, you know, you go from four to if not winning it. So I made a mistake there. Uh, you've got to have a gamble, you've got to be flying. You know, I had two hours to play with, and I regret that. You know, it's in hindsight, but, you know, I thought I made the right choice, but I made it back in time. In fact, I had about 20 seconds to spare. That's how close I was uh, to, to not making it, but if I've gone the other way, so uh, I learned from that. You have to gamble. Uh, so that, that's a mistake in that competition. But still a credible fourth, I was happy. That would uh, I am a tour. I forgot to ask you, John, did you want to have a break for a beer stop in the middle? Or have you, got, think, yeah, have you, have you, got, have you got a suitable point where you want to do it? Great point for a break. Yeah, have a break for a top up? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm going to do a time break. What sort of time do you want? Are oh, we all looking at the time? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't. Um, I'll go through this. Got, um, and if you want, there's, there's a, I, I have an instant um, here which I can talk for and give me some tips. What not to do? Um, depends if have enough time. So this is uh, really um, when we set our aim to do this hyper fly journey. Um, <coughs> we met here, Bud. He, um, he wants to join in with what I was doing and, um, and we thought we want to fly some big stuff in Europe. So we've done a couple of records already and we want to get a, get a a really good quality hike and fly uh, competition done in, in the uh, in the Alps. So I went to Switzerland to do the Ivy Tour. Now I can talk about this for a couple of hours that I won't, uh, but I won't. But basically, it's a couple hundred kilometres, a four day event, or five day, or that five day um, event, over 200 kilometres. Uh, and you fly with the likes of Krugel Myra. And, and you know many other great you know athletes and it's an amazing event an amazing place to fly in. this is a takeoff call first uh, and we flew across the valley and everything's so big and the Eiger is a mile high you know and this is our first view of the, the Eiger that's a mile high from where we were uh, and that's took at night we were raided by a fox it was trying to have off with my trainers. It was actually the tent, and uh, I heard some shuffling around, and, and Bud went, What's is that you down by my feet? I went, I was over here, and Bud was over here. I went, No. He went, Oh, fuck, what was that? <laughs> and then, um, anyway, so I zipped out and walked out into his real cubicle, and this fox is there, licking the trainers. He just come on your knee, and anyway, so we. We sorted all our stuff out and put it in the car and that's the view we got. It was just beautiful, that's pitch black and, and then the moon shining on the, on the Eiger, absolutely stunning. And, you know, our first proper view, we rocked up the day, evening before and the cloud was down so we didn't see it and boom we saw that. Wow, that's amazing. So the, the way the Eiger 2 works is you have a you have these turn points uh, all around the Grindelwald Wall uh, area, uh, and it's you know it's just stunning. Uh, but you won't be flying. So we got there a week early. We had a massive problem with COVID, etc. There, but we got out there. You know, we just had to really push hard. We got out there eventually, and um, and this is the race day. Um, you know, chucking it down. Uh, but you need to be flying here, so on day day one, 
you, you, you know, you have three times the size of, you know, scarf belt in one day, you know, because uh, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't really fly, or I thought you couldn't fly. So I've got going, and you sort of land up here, and, and you're like, you look round the crew of the was there, and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> You know, it's just just brilliant atmosphere. I got some video footage; it's all ringing out. But it's just too much. Now, this is our first takeoff. <laughs> Would you take off in that? <laughs> and I thought people are setting up, but what's going on here? Anyway, yeah, 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 okay, we'll be taking off shortly. Anyway, oh, we are taking off, are we? <laughs> you know, I thought we'd be running down again. But no, no, the pros are flying western. We're flying too. Like, oh my god. You know, so we're taking off in, and uh, but what we did have, we had video footage from live cameras at the bottom of the valley. So where we were here, and um, you can just see here, it's low cloud, but you can see the ground, and uh, and it got better. And um, so, so yeah, so Kugel Mile was just really around here somewhere, another pros, and so you lay out and you launch, and then. Uh, you know, and then uh, that's what it can look like. You know, that's uh, a wrecking act we did. We walked on the takeoff up here somewhere, and you see the path got a beautiful. So that's what it can look like. But this is what it looked like on race day. And, um, <laughs> you know, I got loads of these, and video went flying off that take off, and I thought, Buzz in front of me, so I'd rather stay behind him. Uh, I could, like, 20 feet. Then he vanished. I went, oh my God, where's he go? You know, I was in the cloud, I thought, you know, all right, so I'll just, you know, s slow down a bit, I'll just, you know, and eventually it came out, I was right behind him, it's fought around, and I pulled over to the flank, so I, I got away from him, and then it started breaking up, and the cloud came in, and we got lower, and eventually you landed on the other side of the valley over, over here, walked back up again, and this is what you're taking off in again, and this was mad. So this here, is a massive ball here, a massive cliff on this side, and you just try to lay out best you could. He had to fly out of his ball, go over the lip of this re-entry, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, lip going down here, and come back down this side. So he wants to fly that way, round and back that way. And it's all in the cloud, it's like, what? Like, I'm, I'm really doing this, and there's a Mexican guy there who came over from Mexico, and he was spending the first 20 minutes while I was laying out, trying to talk himself out flying, or into flying, you know, and then, um, anyway, he took off and he was fine, but it was like, what? I've never, you know, I'm, this is what pros do over there. And when he went out round over here, you came out with clouds, you were fine. You crossed the valley, four or five k's down the, the, the over to another valley, and try to land in a little gap in it, some trees, you know, and you're like, oh, where are we going to land, where are we going to land? It looks tiny. And you see all these people who are in front of you milling around, all right, it must be there. And they fly in, and when you get there, it's quite quite large, you know, it's, and uh, it's a lot of fun. But would you take off there? Yeah, um, so I can talk about this, you know, uh, it's a big subject to talk about, but it's a great experience. And we've got the tick in the box for doing the, the Ivy tour. This is what we wanted, what that tick in the box. Um, because if we want to do bigger things, you've got to start having a portfolio of, well, you've done X, Y, and Z. So we've got the tick in the box. Power, you need some power. There's one on the wall beside the television. I've just seen the power thing. You can look at it. Yeah. 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 What is hiking for that? Right, mate. It's a great fun. Adventure. If you like adventures, which, which I do, I spent a lifetime looking for adventures and doing adventures. Um, um, back in, in, in the 
the young army days with, with Scraggy and, and back um, you know, before like, it's just an adventure. Yeah. It's just great fun. And if you want an adventure, Hyper provides you the ticket. Um, it's just, it opens so many doors. It's an amazing journey, adventure. That's how I describe it in a way. Great fun. Yeah, so that's the idea. And again, if we have time at the end, I'll, I'll talk about uh, my incident. Um, uh, so then, another one that includes this in three days. Uh, this is a hike and fly again. Uh, probably flew over one of the young guys here. That's right, you were chatting, you were on Magnet early on. Um, so I took off above it, it might be your group this year. And I flew the three day, uh, the three peaks in, in, in the Dales. Uh, so I can fly again. I flew from Magnet over to Ingleborough, over to Penny again, and back to back to uh, Rivers, Riverhead. Um, just great fun. Uh, again, on me, the only drawback of hiking and flying is a lot of it you're on your own. Because nobody, no one else wants to come out with you, you know. You, you know, you're, you're always so you're spending a lot of time on your own. But great if you've got a, a, a mate who's doing it with you. Yeah. Um, so that's great fun. So that's uh, Dale's. That was just um, another these sort of peaks, the uh, little challenges that you can do uh, if you're hooking to the north, Northern Challenge Trophy, um, and Queensbridge Northern Challenge Trophy. Looking at links are great fun. It's like a little jigsaw puzzle that you put together um, and work. And when you achieve it, it's great fun. So, managed to complete that one and all this year. Next competition, the, the E race, the North Wales one. Um, um, this will be the best result. I got second place on this one. Um, um, things went well here. The winner. He was a local pilot. It's the best he's ever flown in his area on that particular day. And he absolutely nailed it. He nailed everybody, you know. Um, I was the closest to him. But my, my um, I think um, Greg Hamilton asked me what the plan was when I'm going to stick right behind um, Dougie Swan Low. Because it's his area. And I don't really know North Wales that well. And I was doing well until selfishly he, he bombed out <laughs> and landed and I flew over him. I, I went, well what do I do now? <laughs> so I had to work it out for myself and, and eventually 10, 15k down the line, Dougie flew over me and I was hiking and uh, I never saw him again. He flew over, tagged him a 3,000 footer and flew back over me when I was walking. Um, but um, that's snowed in there. Um, I, I flew quite well, uh, but I made a mistake here. Got uh, Grim Gok. If you know Grim Gok, it's quite a tough little scramble. Never mind where you carry the full of all grid. But I had to tag it because my, my aim was to do the 3,000 peaks, all of them, and I get bonus points, which, which works in the end and got the second place. But, but I want to fly this bit because I know it's tough to walk and I'm going to be quite tired. But I ended up landing below it and having to walk up there. And it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Uh, you know, you're doing scrambling and a little bit of climb, you know, get a rock climbing and then big drops below you with, um, you know, 15, 16 kilograms of weight on your back. It wasn't nice. And I tagged it. I think I could go right along, we see the back of it there, to right along the knife edge to Snowden. I'll go camp on the top. But you had to be finished at a certain time. Um, and um, there's no way I was going to do it in time. So I just got to the top. I thought, I've got to climb back down. So I climbed back down and uh, I stopped here and camped here. But if I, if I can, I'm going. You know, I got to stop on the ridge for the night. You know, I just just sat there like a lemon. <laughs> so that that was that was a bit um, that was a bit of a killer. But anyway, can I ask you about nutrition? Yeah, you said that. I did. Uh, oh, anyway, my name's Francis. Um, <coughs> athletes 
Um, and yeah, on this one, I tried your nut sort of oats, and for the trees, we had a, a BLT for the dinner. And I went, I went, you know, limited because I'm a full ball bib. So I know Greg Hammett and Tim were chatting about it for a while, and, and they're all on a sort of similar diet. But Greg's got a habit of finding somewhere or someone to give him, you know, to make him some food. <laughs> and I think if you watch the video, he's got a brilliant video out on, the, on, on here, you must watch it, it's great. Uh, however, the video, it doesn't show me getting on the podium, because I made a mistake with the workings out, and never add my, add my bonus points. So there's a pretender who's uh, taking, my, taking my trophy <laughs> on that one, but a uh, great video, watch it, it's really good. And, but yeah, so look at Nutrition Nuts. Um, I had um, what did I have? I had some meat, pocket meat, I call it uh, pocket meat, you know, and <laughs> uh, uh, nuts, just stuff that I can just pick out and and you know, it's not very good. You get sick of it after a while, but I just keep nibbling all day and sandwich for dinner. And uh, so I had my sandwich here, looking over, uh, you know, beautiful views. It was spectacular. You know, I can just put a lot of pictures up of it, you know. The sun going down and stuff, but just not enough, not enough time. So yeah, got Hammer there and the guys running around the admin area. That's my mate there doing breakfast for everyone, or for, for me in the morning. A little tent there. Just some views there. I mean, that, that's that's Grim Glock up there to your right. You can see how much of a climb it is. That's where I landed coming over and another land. It's just, just, I mean, it's just adventure. I mean, at that, it's just adventure. Um, that, that's what you get. But yeah, that, that was, um, yeah, no mistakes. I did quite well, just, just kind of grim golf was a, was a bit of a lick out. And then, um, perhaps a bit dangerous too, but, but anyway, but that's that. Um, X Tales then, this is the final hike and fly of the year. Um, uh, again, I had a big gamble here, so that, this is like a bonus one really, this one planned in diary, but Ed Clinton's been put it together almost last minute. Um, they talked about it for a while, and then um, they put it together, and this is taken one of the guys, took it on me flying, for like doing a bit of flying on that day. Uh, but I think he was, so, this, this is the, the game they're playing now, so um, do you fly or do you walk? So we had, we first started at Semper, we went up to Port Spout to go up high. And a lot of guys went early. Now I left it later on because I'm looking at the weather window, which incidentally totally lied. <laughs> right, however, so I left it. So 10 o'clock before I set off from Semper. By this time, people were already flying over, but it didn't matter. Uh, my gamble was, I'll get up there when it starts to work. It's a four-star day, I'm going to be booing up and flying over everyone. And that's my plan, that's my strategy. So I got up there, and there's a Dale's pilot, first time, not got that many hours to be fair, but fair to it, it was high and flying. And they decided to follow me, which is a bit silly. Anyway, so and yeah, um, I said, right, this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try it. Went, All right, then I'll, I'll do that. We sat there for two hours and nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> two hours wasted. Anyway, we're gonna do just a, a tiny sort of gamble and I went, I got high and I got halfway across the valley, but by this time you know, I was way behind the pack. It never paid it off. It had paid it off. I might have better fly around. And uh, that's a plan. But that's the gamble. Never paid off. But I still, no, I never made it to go even. I got to the um, promotion at RV and ran out of daylight around the time. And uh, so um, I didn't make it to go. It's the first time I never made it to go um, on, on the hike and fly. But you have to gamble. On. From going back to the Exelates, where I never gambled, and finished mediocre, you know, sort of fourth, 
you know, I, I watched a gamble this time and it never, it never paid off. So, um, you know, but great fun trying it. You win some, you lose some. So, yeah, yeah, but, yeah so that's the uh, x -Dales. And that's it. Any questions? Yeah, go on. Tell us what happened in the Iber Can you really want to write that? <laughs> well, this would be a young doctor. That, oh, that yeah. helped rescue me. <laughs> um, and that got a lot of hits on the social media. <laughs> who's, who's your doctor friend? Uh, it's quite funny. Um, and ironically, she asked me for my name, my email, my phone number, my address, and my blood type. <laughs> I'm not sure what the guys want like that. <laughs> but she, I give her. She got all the information she needed there. Lovely. So, um, so this is um, on a launch, and launch was quite quite easy compared to what we've been launching in. Uh, you see the day there. That's uh, probably a couple of hours after the incident. Um, and the incident itself was a, a forward launch down a, a plateau. Uh, and then a sheer cliff. Um, so a walking guy took off, no problem. And then me and my mate were there. My mate took off, uh, no problem. So I decided, yep, yeah, I'm good for this. Big launch, carried it up, I've got my wheel up. Um, but there was a hazard, and the hazard at the end of this cliff was a, a, a one bar a worn sort of a uh, bar and um, cable electric fence to keep some cattle from falling off the cliff. Um, and then, so that's your hazard. And this is, so, you know, I, I looked at, um, I was quite tired, and um, a bit of competition fever. And um, so the mate had just gone, I need, you know, we're going to try and do a flight again, so I need to be away. Um, it was getting late. Now, if I didn't make a launch, I'd be sweeping on top of a hill for the night. Uh, we've lived a kit. Uh, we didn't have full ball bait. We were keeping in the hooks. So all these pressures started coming on to me. So I took off. Wind came up. Perfect. Uh, very, very still. It's it's later on now. I started running down a hill. And I just wasn't generating the height. So I just fully committed. Push my whole body forward, so I'm leaning forward, you know, like this, as you do the forward launch. Fully committed, and I just got over this electric fence. But me, one of my feet just caught it. So when I when I started taking off, it caught it. And the wind came over my head, uh, right over my head. It came away, and I started going down the the, the mountain. So. I just braked, you know, fully to correct it. And I, I remember, yeah, yeah, I got this, I got this, I got this. And suddenly, boom, one side went. Um, and it just spun me. And I remember getting spun round, and thinking, oh, fuck, this is it now. It's just a massive cliff. And then I impacted the rock face, full on back like this. So the full side of the cliff, full impact. And that's the really last I remember. Um, and it took me down, um, and um, and and luckily there was a. I'll show you a picture of it. Amazingly, I got a picture of it. There was a, a little plateau, so a sheer cliff, followed by a, a plateau like this. I don't know, not so sheer, but with little bits that you can grab hold of. And before I went over the next sheer drop, I just stopped and died, and just caught on. And the wind just came nestling, you know. Um, Next to me, and uh, you know, so I was proper breaking it, holding on, and and the, um, I just remember thinking, you know, bloody hell, yeah, adrenaline going, and then sort of reaching out and grabbing a rock to try and get a better hold, and then rocks just came away, it's just crumbling with rock. Oh god, I was just absolutely terrified. Anyway, so but I was wasn't falling, so it's good. So I thought, I need to get my SOS going. So 
pay, pay from the device, so that will get a bit of use out of it. So I'll whack on the SOS and then confirm the helicopters coming out now. That's good, so I've got the helicopter put that away. So I needed to get to a better location because it, you know, it was very precarious. I didn't like looking over at the sheer cliff below me and I could see a ledge above me. So I thought, what I'll do, I'll climb up to that ledge. So I've got to get unhooked out of my, out of my kit. So with one hand, I'm trying to hold on, I uncut carefully, took my wing off, speed system off, uh, and just pushed the wing away from me. I didn't want that inflating and dragging me off. Now I thought, if I keep my harness on, if I do fall asleep, I've got my reserve. I'll just go from the reserve, push away from it. So that's my plan. If it works or not, I don't know, but that's my plan. I've got a, you know, I've got something to, something to hold on to. So, um, so I keep keep my harness on, and the helicopter can hook up to my harness and get me off when it gets here. So yeah, keep it on. And then, so very slowly, walk, climb back up this, not a sheer rock face, but you know, precarious rock face. I got to this ledge where I managed to take some photographs and get it out on social media, that was all right. <laughs> uh, you see there, by the face, I'm bricking it there. You know, but just holding on. And this is the interlaken in the bottom here. This is where the helicopter came from. Um, and there it comes. Um, has he got you on your, just in your paragliding mouse? Yes, that's right. He's just given me a, a cord. I hooked it in, he hooked it into his and boom off and went. Yeah. God, I was so relieved. Proper brick in it, but you know, lucky, again, lucky to be alive, uh, uh, to be honest with you. Um, and this guy here who came, he's a winch man, he's a paraglider instructor. <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me a bit of a brief. <laughs> it was funny. And then, but he also went back and picked up the wing for me. And the wing, apart from one line, was undamaged. Yeah. Undamaged, you know. And it leaves me that paper, these zero lights, you know. Um, so just unbelievable. So this guy, here, you know, amazing. That's me in hospital. Uh, so injuries, I broke all the bones in my hand. I bashed my ankle in, and um, I had a compression fracture on me, on the spine, on the vertebrae, uh, which gives me very little grief. Um, and so very lucky. So it's weird, like being in all your flying kit and your wing on the floor and your harness and like what? But yeah, they looked after me and um, charged me two and a half grand. <laughs> and the privilege. Did they drag that onto your bill? I never know, but <laughs> it should. It should come to pay for that. And <laughs> um, so it's always good to check the machines, make sure that's set up right. And that there. So this guy here was in Interlaken and it's not a great shot but if you uh, have a look over here you can see a blue wing so I've launched off here hit this cliff fell down to here and stopped before this drop here yeah uh, more, it's got a few more cuts of helicopters how far is the travel? <laughs> You know, it's just a blur, um, two, you know, it's what, a couple hundred feet, I guess. But, um, is that's... Interlaken a good place to go for flying? Um, is it, uh, apart from doing that, yeah. is Interlaken a good place to go Absolutely go stunning, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, honestly, it's amazing, and you're dwarfed, you're proper, you know, it's just, everything's so big. And the conditions work great. It's the first, it's the first time we've had bad weather on the comp. Um, you know, and um, you know, only had I think one good flying day, and um, the previous year, that's the fourth edition, the other three years have been fantastic flying. We got there early and we did some big flying, I mean, but to wreck in the areas, it's such a vast area, and uh, but yeah, beautiful, and uh, a lot of that, that there is pilot error. So, and uh, the way the way I look at it, and I'm lucky to get away with this, I know that. With virtually no injuries. Um, but it's part of the area, so the, the way, so 
what I do when I look tired. I thought, right, there's a hazard there, but I should get over it. You know, the chance of hit, hitting that, five, ten percent chance of hitting it. You need to get over that. You know, so that, that was a big turn of thought. Tired, just walked up three scarf elms. Quite nerve wracking because, you know, you, you, I'm in a new area and I'm launching, you know, we normally we'll launch, you know. We had clouds here in, in Great Britain. I never launched in any of it, you know, but it's just a little bit different mindset. I, you can launch here because your valleys are all clear, and that's the mindset. Uh, anyway, so the way you analyse it, especially to you pilots, if there's 1% chance that if you hit that, it could be, fa could be a fatal, you don't launch. If it's 1% chance, not 5 or 10. 1% and that, that's how, so that's what I've learned, if you, if you look at a situation where you're launching and high compliant, if you do, if I have, may have not have any spies here now, but if I have any spies that do it, you, you, you're taking off all the time in different areas and, and you, you're assessing, assessing it all the time. If there's a little meadow going down and a 1% chance of hitting a wire, then you launch because you're, you may probably get a few bruises, but if you're launching off that, then one percent, not five or ten, I, I estimated it to be, and uh, then you don't do it. Stop. How do you feel about forward launches these days? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I got back on this. We, we were just chatting to one of the guys. Who was it? We were chatting to you before yourself. You know about the mental side of it. Uh, I was told to rest up for a couple of weeks. Um, but I finished the comp, um, I sorted my win out and then um, I got back on the saddle with me about three days, ready for fall and launch. Yeah. I was nervous. I bet. But I did it all right and, and um, I, I done, the next one I did was when it exhales off Wild Boar Fell. And it wasn't pleasant, there was a little bit of turbulence, fall and launch. Uh, it was weird actually, and then I had to use quite a bit of courage to, to get going and I launched it, forward launched it off it um, and it, I was fine, but yeah, you know, it's, but it's a good question. We so rarely do them, do we? No, we don't, that's it. They're easy to do, but you just got to get back on the saddle. If you want to continue a spot like, like we were talking about before, get back on the saddle and do it. And then, yeah, well, well, it's either one or the other, isn't it? You know, go or you do. Um, but I've, I've done, I, after that incident, I had you know, a couple more competitions. And, and I talked about Grim Gok. And uh, I was climbing Grim Gok and looking down at this like 200 foot drop. I thought, am I really doing this? You know, and this one, right, and I thought, I'm, you know, just tumbled down the mountain and I'm now climbing back up a mountain with a big pack on my back. You know, I felt safe enough but you know it's just the mind playing games with you. And I'm am I really doing this? Walking with God. So that's what I'll learn, you know, and, and that's what hopefully you guys can learn too. You know, if you've one percent chance of it happening, you don't do it. And that's what I learned from there. Uh, otherwise you might not be here to tell the tale. Right, that's it. I hope you've all enjoyed it. So how yeah. does that make you feel about taking off in flat 20 foot behind your buddy that you've lost visibility of and you don't know if you're going to fly into the well, It's crazy, you know, and this, uh, so I wasn't going to get his accent with that Mexican guy who was trying to talk to someone the flight, he? He's on the world stage, this guy, so, you know, one of the, um, you know, uh, Big guys, and he was there, and he was talking south of the way because that was hard because you're taking off of the boat that way to go over a lip here to go back down there again, mm. and all in the cloud. And you know, and, and then so it, getting your head around it was difficult, but honestly, a few hundred feet into the flight, when you, you've done that hard bit, you're out in the valley and it's clear. So, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just. Just getting you, you know, you're watching crew of a mile and launch, you're thinking, shall I 
well, he's doing it, you know. <laughs> and then, but I was all, and some guys actually never, um, on, on that one I showed you before, where you actually do that dog leg, there's, there's a, that is a really steep climb down. Now, I'm not sure, I don't know if anyone walked down there, because it's a really difficult climb down. So he needs to flare, flare, really. But on the first one, there's a few guys who, who ran, who ran, ran it. And still finished pretty high up in the in the comp itself. Um, but if you what I'd be on the podium we've got we've got a way uh, running roll I guess. Uh, but I, I wasn't I wasn't going to launch to be fair. Bud said, you know, Bud sort of said, well, they're launching aren't we? Aren't we? <laughs> are we? <laughs> so um, and it, uh, uh, there was a pro there too, uh, I said uh, so uh, I got chatting to him when I set up, so, um, what's the pro call? I said, man, we'll get your instrument, we don't hit any clips. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I can use it, so I had a really good terrain map on it, and um, I had fly sky highlights, I had loads of terrain, so, you, I, I flew there, you know, uh, that first picture I showed you, I flew there, and, and uh, so I knew, when you fly out, I knew where to go, I knew that adventure would come out. But even when you came out, um, you know, there's still pirates everywhere, in clouds above you, below you, and, you know, and it's like, wow, it's wild, this is weird. And um, flew right across the valley, about 10, 15 k's across the huge area, and then that was on the other side of the valley, and um, I, I, know, I can talk about this all that. And, you know, you, you land on the road and all these other pilots dropping out the sky. Amazing, they like, mm. you put your kit away and a guy comes running down the road and, you know, lands by you and, you know, a guy lands in the field and, you know, a farm bush or something, it's like, crazy. <laughs> but it's, it's just surreal, uh, but great experience, you know, getting, getting out to Europe and seeing how they do it. And, and uh, you know, it's just a great experience. I mean, this, this was a, uh, uh, I, I didn't know whether I was going to talk about this, I didn't want to put people off, but I think it's, uh, in a intelligent flying community like we are in the UK, we learn from experiences. So if I taught you anything, I'll give you some top tips, you know, that, that's, that's, you know that's, that's the top tip. You know, if the 1% chance of going wrong, you don't watch. And that's what I learned from there. Even in competitions. Any, any more questions? Did you hear from the doctor again? Yeah. So? <laughs> 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 I saw her, she was got me over. You wait, you wait <laughs> on the phone call, right? <laughs> I am, I am. I was so happy. No, she was lovely, but she was like just hell smashed because she, she got really come across it. Uh, you know what was going on. So when I told her, she was like, wow, it's amazing. Um, I said, yeah, what are the pipes in the shop? <laughs> no, but she was lovely. And, uh, yeah. You know, in these type of fly comps, is it best to partner up with somebody initially and fly as a team and then go your own ways when you get to the end or what? It's really difficult when you fly. When we got the more experienced pros in here, you know, it's really hard to fly as a team. Bud and I are really good now. We fight never. You don't sacrifice. In competitions, we we always uh, and when you start flying and doing it a lot, you kind of know the weather, whether you can get round in a day or whether it's going to be a bit tougher or you kind of know where to go. It's all, you, you get a, a picture, a good picture. So you look at a map, you look at the weather, and you sort of you get. So you, you all the, I've noticed when we sat around chatting, all the, the experienced pilots, we come up with the same, we come up with the same plans. Because you know what you can do, how far you can reach, and, and you know what the weather's doing, and where it can get tricky. And you seem to know um, um, that the route, so you sit down chatting, so we've all got the same route in, in your mind. Um, they are a little bit different, you know, different starting points, etc. Um, 
but flying together as a group is really difficult. Um, try it on the next scene. Um, you know, when, when, when uh, we're on the North South Club, you're all in that big gaggle, and, and you know, 100k down the, down the, down the way, you're, like, you're on your own. Um, Why is everyone gone? It's so hard to fly together. Um, it's tough. But the great thing about having a flying partner, high can fly, you've got someone to talk to. Uh, which is brilliant because it's very lonely if you're on your own all the time. It gets boring. Um, I think pilots are social creatures. That's why we're all here now. So if you can get a, a mate to fly with, it's a bonus. And I've been really lucky because the mate I fly with is a top pilot. Mm. Much better than me. And uh, so I, I'm always learning. What it is. So it's a bonus for me. Any more? Any more questions? What are your plans for next year then? Well, that's a big question. Um, we, so we were set out on this in 2019. We want to see how far we could go. And the reason we want to be either to under our belt to see if we can go a bit further. I've learned a lot from that with regards to um, The sort of best pilots have been doing it since we're 12. I, I, and I'm six years down the line. I'm 50 next year. And, and I, I think I don't have enough experience to really do the bigger stuff. Uh, I've really enjoyed the journey. I've got really, I've not been as fit since the army days. So I've got really fit. And I've stayed injury free, training wise. And we kind of had, well, forget the eye or two we've done, and maybe next year we'll do a few more in Europe, and possibly the Expira. That would probably be my ceiling, uh, which is what I want to do. The reason I'm very apprehensive now, it's so expensive to do that. Um, I do have a family, of course. Um, it's, it's, it's very expensive, uh, but I don't have the experience of flying. I've never flown the ex in the Pyrenees, for example. So if I do, if I do uh, next year, I've got to get out there for a bunch of recce and fly it and learn it. And I asked my partner very nicely, she won't, you know, didn't mind going over there. Then I've got to go back again for the competition and all the expense. So. That would be uh, a goal that we were thinking about. Practically now, I'm not sure it's going to be achievable. But for them two reasons, you know, experience and cost. Um, but I might do something like the um, sort of border fly, that sort of comp. I might do one more European comp next year. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Locally, um, I'm probably going to do all the local ones again. And we've got some, you know, great new personnel people, and I've not won one yet either. And I got second <laughs> last year, I got second this year, the best conditions. So it would be nice to get a, get on the on the top of the podium. Uh, but to be honest with you, I say that tongue in cheek because coming between mid table. Um, or coming anywhere, it's just great fun. Yeah, great uh, it is great fun. But no, I will see. You know, I'm, um, yeah, you know, what, a few other things going on too, which have, uh, uh, has sort of upset me and put me back a little bit. So we'll see. I don't know. I, if, if I do it, I'll uh, definitely come back and, and tell you all about it if I do it next but, but I don't know. I really, I'm really not sure. Well, you must have something in your mind that you're thinking about going to the Ibit or getting stamps for doing. <laughs> but it's just, it's just having a plan. Yeah. You know, it aims. It's an old army thing. You know, you, you do anything. You, you don't just do it half-heartedly. You, and you know, when I started building this, this um, presentation, it was all formal. And and the part that said, you're not in the military anymore. Just make it more <laughs> informal. So I just. Went through the first slides and I've been a lot of them, you know, just full of, And then, but, but so no, I got an aim, and the aim was to start hiking flying. 
uh, doing competition for it in Europe and see how far that will take me. Um, I'm not sure whether, I'm not sure yet. We'll see, we'll see how far it takes me. But you know, um, so within that we had the training, you know, we had the, have a, you can get fit, do your ground handling, do your flying, mix it all in. Um, but it's very committing and I couldn't go flying. I mean, I haven't been a pilot, this is the first year I've not been a pilot. I don't, I don't think I've had a seat without a I've fallen over, I think. What? Oh, I went to Pendle. <laughs> I went to Pendle. Uh, that, that first bit of footage I showed you. Um, that was the first flight of the year, I think. And, and I flew Pendle. But I've not a time to see because you, you're training or you're wrecking in, in Wales, South North Wales. I can fly in. You miss this part of it, the fact the debriefs, you know, it's so addictive. So it's um, it's very committing. So I'm thinking maybe next year have a gap year perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. My daughter's having a gap year. I'm going out to China, so I'm having a gap year and we'll spend some time with my family perhaps a bit more. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm... Two years ago I had it planned out. But now I'm a little bit more uh, experienced. A good question, though. Yeah, this is the best of luck. Oh, thank you. Any more? Any more? Well, thank you very much for having me. I really thank enjoyed coming out. Yeah, right? really and really and well feel free to have a look at some of the kit, um, yeah. uh, high profile stuff if you're. Okay, we've really enjoyed that. You've been enlightening us. But from my point of view, it's been a pleasure watching you your career developed so rapidly. I remember doing that little first XC with you when we landed at Ribchester. That's right, yeah. Um, that was, I think that was your first trip over the back. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, that was such a little treat, that. So your, your progress has been fantastic in, in that time. Yeah, you because know, that wasn't that long ago. Nice. It's, um, it's all about hours and hours and hours So, very well done. But thanks very much again. That was a, a real treat. <laughs>